Um, we are very, very, very fortunate to have this film here tonight. It's, again, probably one of two or three of the most important films in our festival lineup that we want everybody, everybody to see. This is a top, we hope it gets seen all over the country, all over the world, all over the planet. Um, and you are one of the first audiences to see this film tonight. You're definitely the first audience to see this cut. They did a new cut with some new information. It gives me great, great, great pleasure to bring up the producer and director of this film. Her passion is just extraordinary on this topic. She is, has been a joy and a gem and a wonderful, wonderful person to work with to make this screening happen. Please welcome Keely Shea Brosnan. Thank you all so much for your warm welcome. Thank you, Patrick, for selecting our film to grace your stage and your festival. It's a true honor for us to be here. Uh, Patrick's right, this is the first time an audience will see this cut tonight. It's still a rough cut, but this will be the last cut that I make until the film is available for worldwide distribution. Uh, the topic, Poisoning Paradise, um, it was born on a swim with my neighbor who wanted to make a film called Pass the Bill. And the bill is at the heart and soul of this film, but the content of this film is much bigger than the bill, as you're about to see. This film was made with great passion uh, about a place that I love, for people that I love, and our ultimate goal is that we affect positive change, not just on our island and in our legislature and in our state, but worldwide for everyone. And once you see the film, you'll understand why. I'll be here afterwards for a Q&A. So without further ado, please enjoy the show. I hope you uh, like what you see, and I'm here to answer questions afterwards. Thank you so much. Today, these islands face an uncertain future, and the survival of this natural paradise is being threatened. Um, it's quite a film. It has a big punch, and I think I think the reason that it's important is that the message is universal, and we're all dealing with this political corruption right now, and people are awake, and they're activated, and they're engaged, and they want to make a difference, and that's what I tried to do with this film. I really tried to share the story of these indigenous people that live in Hawaii that are on a daily basis unable to stop these chemical companies from using these heavy restricted use pesticides, general use pesticides, right up against where they live, right up against their homes, uh, sensitive shoreline, hospitals, schools, um, old folks homes, places that really should be protected, places that it should be obvious to have buffer zones. So the idea was really to take this story, the culmination of it, and string each section together like a pearl in a necklace using a metaphor so that you could see the big picture. There were newspaper articles, there were small news stories, there were marches, there were protests, but nobody had ever really put it all together before. And that's why I wanted to take an opportunity to do that so that I could share this message with you and share it with other people and really try in whatever way I could to affect positive change. So thank you for that incredibly warm reception. Um, I'd also like to thank my producing partner who couldn't be here tonight. She's at a wedding, Teresa Tico. Uh, Pass the Bill was initially her idea and all good ideas start somewhere and I'm so grateful for this journey. I'd also like to thank Max Frauscher, our cinematographer who's here tonight. Please give him a warm hand. So Max has been working on this piece with us for what, two years now? Two? Yeah, about two years. About two years. Uh, I think I've been doing it three and a half since the beginning. Um, and it's been quite a journey because the film has changed many times. Oops, these are reverberating. Maybe I can't sit so close to you. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. Uh, 
it's changed. There have been many incarnations, and there will be one more before the film is released this summer. Um, but the footage is extraordinary. We had to get a new computer because our file was so big. The computer I had at home wouldn't handle it anymore. It's it wouldn't like handle the extraordinary drives. 4K footage. Uh, and there are so many beautiful new images being dropped in. So that's really what we're doing now. We're finessing it and sending it to graphic designers and to a Finnish editor to give it the polish. We're incredibly indebted to Pink Floyd, who gave us the song Money, which everybody seemed to respond to. Good to hear the reaction. And also to Neil Young for that incredible song at the end, who's gonna stand up. And that really is the question, who's gonna stand up? So, does anybody have any questions for us? Yes, so raise your hand and I'll come to you with the question. Can I ask the first question of, of actually of Max? Sure. Was, was there any threat to you as we're getting those wonderful, beautiful drone shots? Did you face anything from the companies? Were you... Well, without getting too in depth, <laughs> uh, I'm assuming you didn't have permission, but I'm just guessing. Or, or at least that they may not have known, I don't know. You know, we're just trying to, walk, trying to tell the truth and we're trying to document this thing. Um, I lived in Hawaii as a kid and it's, you know, it's basically my muse in the world. It's my favorite place in the world. And I discovered this cause about 10 years ago. And when I discovered it, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat. I, uh, it, it was just one of the scariest things I ever heard. So I've been researching it. And when uh, Keely and Terry found my footage and asked me to work on it, it was one of the greatest honors of my life. And um, my daughter's right here. She uh, leans over to me during this film. It's the first time she's seen it. She's like, Dad, she's like, is this true? And I had to say yes. You know, it's totally, she, I've taken her to Hawaii a bunch of times. And it's just, you know, it's worth fighting for. So she can have it when, you know, and her kids can have it. And it's a very worthwhile cause. But yes, there are inherent dangers. and but it's worth it. We have a question over here. Uh, thanks. First, wonderful film. Thank you so much for making that. I'm just curious, does the testing extend throughout the Hawaiian Islands or is it restricted only to Kauai? Well, that's a good question. Uh, right now, they have been testing on uh, Molokai, and I believe there are some test sites on Maui. Uh, Kauai is really ground zero for genetic engineering testing. And the latest news is that they are moving their entire operation from Molokai to Kauai. So they're going to expand their operations over there, which is not good for the residents. From our perspective, it's, um, I think because we've lost everything thus far, they're emboldened, if I could be so bold to say that myself. I, th I think that's what's happening right now. So it really does come down to education and each and every one of us hopefully participating in that political process. If you love Hawaii, I think now's a good time to consider writing a letter to the Board of Tourism, to write a letter to the governor, and let your voice be heard because these concerns are real and certainly drift is real and relevant. And as you saw, Dr. Uh, Lauren Pang, who was a former advisor to the World Health Organization and is part of the Department of Health in Maui. These concerns are real, and we want to make sure that the legislature is doing their job to protect not only the residents, but also visitors alike. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful film. I have a two-pronged question. One is, that land is supposed to be held in public trust for the Hawaiian people. There's a big movement among the Hawaiian people, the native people, to say this was our land. And it seems like such a violation that that land once freed up from its previous pineapple growing and sugarcane growing was not given to people to start organic farming and provide some of that 90% of the food stuff shipped on container ships. Was there a reason why that was never entertained? Was there ever a movement to do that? And the second question is, how far is the civil rights question about the viability of that decision to hand it over to GMO companies? What's the story on that? It's a good question. Uh, both of them are, Paul Agitoff is one of the senior attorneys at Earth Justice and he's handling uh, the litigation right now uh, against the Civil Rights Act from 1964 about discriminating against these 
um, this local population and these people. Um, it's my understanding that the federal government gives money to the state for its agricultural programs. So with that in mind, there is a violation of their civil rights. And I agree with you, it's almost a criminal uh, enterprise that our best ag land is being used for experimental test sites rather than for growing food. If we had a natural disaster, if we had a hurricane, I believe there's something like a six day food supply and that's it. So we would have to rely on outside help for our food. Uh, the reality is that the people who live on Kauai don't want this. There may be are a few hundred jobs at stake, but there could be other jobs in agricultural sector that could be fulfilled in this way. Um, I don't think that our entire economy is reliant on this chemical industry. And as you saw in the film, there's a great uh, disparity between um, what we bring in in terms of tourism dollars for the state of Hawaii and what the GMO industry is bringing to Kauai. One very important point that I have never heard before is that pesticide is really the wrong term. It should be biocide because these chemicals don't know what's a pest and what's something we want to keep alive. Thank you. That was, thank you. That was Dr. Sylvia Earle, and uh, she's a renowned scientist, worked for NOAA for many years, and um, is affectionately referred to as her deepness. She holds the record for the deepest dive ever by a female, and it was actually off the coast of Oahu. I think it was something like 1,600 feet. Uh, impressive woman, and yes, she had a lot to say about this. Each of the experts in this film do, and I think it's um, certainly a mark of the amount of time we've spent that there are no voiceovers in this film. We do a slight introduction based on James Michener's book, Hawaii, but in terms of the content of this film, you are hearing every single soundbite from an expert, and they have a lot to say. And it moves the story forward, and I'm very proud of that, and, and proud of the, the cast that we've assembled. Um, my background, most of you probably don't know, I was an environmental journalist for several decades. I worked for ABC and NBC and CBS and PBS, and I wrote and produced and hosted stories about the environment. Some of you may know me from Unsolved Mysteries. I worked with Robert Stack for a couple years on that show. I had my own show on PBS called Home Green Home. I worked at ABC News. I worked at the Today Show, which is how I met my darling husband, our executive producer. And sadly, he's not here tonight. He got called back to his set. He's uh, shooting a, a show for AMC called The Sun, season two. So he was not able to come tonight, but he sends his regrets. Um, but. From my perspective, I really wanted to assemble what I thought were leaders in this field. Bobby Kennedy is one of the leading environmental lawyers in the nation. <laughs> Vandana Shiva is the mother of this movement, the anti-GMO movement. Sylvia Earle, who we talked about, a renowned scientist. There are so many in this film. Uh, Andy Kimbrell, a real hero of the environment. He runs the Center for Food Safety out of Washington, D.C. And I urge all of you, if you want more information about this particular issue and certainly this cause, to get in touch with them. They have a Hawaii office, but they also have one out of Washington, D.C. And they're very knowledgeable and they work really hard to bring food safety issues um, to Washington so that we can pass legislation that protects our food supply. It's one of the biggest concerns that I have after making this film is that our food supply is really in the hands of just a few multinational corporations. And so food independence is gonna become a real issue. Saving your seeds is going to become a big issue. Um, I think Neil Young talks about that when he's on tour, that it's illegal, I think, to send seeds in the mail, if, you know, a few miles away. They're, they're putting all kinds of restrictions on our ability to do that. But from my perspective, it's a God-given birthright. We should all be able to save our seeds like Johnny Appleseed and plant them freely and share them freely wherever we like. Thank you so much for this important film and thank you for standing up. Now, my question is, how can we make sure that our future elected officials will not be bought, will not be tainted by these companies? Magic question. 
Can anyone answer that? I think we're going to have to really get money out of politics, and we talk about that. We're like, we're going to do it. Sorry? Overturn Citizens United, yes. I mean, the state legislatures in Hawaii, they seem to be just as smitten with the chemical companies as the federal legislators. And I think it's really important that they start hearing our voice on this. It's such a big industry, but I really think that the ramifications, the cost is so high that even if they're telling us we've got to do this to feed starving children in Africa, which I, in my heart of hearts, do not believe that that's why they're doing this, uh, my question is, well, why do we have to poison little Hawaiian children to do that? Why can't we do this in a laboratory? Why can't you do this under controlled circumstances? in a laboratory where the chemicals aren't allowed to escape. It's interesting to me that Syngenta, a, a Swiss-based company, actually bans a lot of the chemicals that they experiment with on our island in their own country. Uh, I just want to say thank you again for the efforts for creating a film like everyone seems to be appreciative about. Um, but actually, what you were saying was perfect for my question, because my question was, is there a main reason or what's the purpose that the tourist industry is not affected by the chemical companies and how uh, they are not, or people that are going there are not aware? Are there, is there a connection between the two or just trades? It's probably that they just don't even know yet, you know what I mean? Just no one the knows. information like, stock is closed. Like, this is the whole point of this is we have to get the word out. Right, know? raise your hand if you knew this was going on in Hawaii. Okay, that's... Maybe 5%. like 5% of our... As deeply passionate as the people are about this, it seems like everyone's fighting overwhelming odds. The, the big companies, the big corporations, our own government. And they're fighting for their kids, I realize that, but how do they keep going on after loss, after loss? What keeps them doing this? That's so... It's almost a miracle they keep doing it. You're talking about what keeps our community fighting year after year, loss after loss? Their children, and their health, and their environment, and their home, I and their love I think we all think our life depends on it, because it does, really, you know? I don't know? We believe in something called Aina. It's like the energy of the land, and I think it sustains them the same way that the land sustains the Native Americans, who believe that the trees sing, and that the, the rivers are alive, and that you know the mountains speak. It, it's the same philosophy and it's diametrically opposed to these chemical corporations who are really interested in feeding their bottom line and, and showing their shareholders a profit. But at some point, they have to live somewhere, they have to drink the water, they have to breathe the air. I don't know where they're gonna hide or run. I don't know if it's true, but somebody recently in an audience told me that in Monsanto, they actually have organic food in their um, commissary. <laughs> should find out. I like to say one thing that, that to me that's sort of the irony is that the Hawaiians, the way they farm, they're in such balance. They're like ahupua system of a forest up in the mountains, bringing nutrient rich water down to feed their kalo, which goes to their fisheries at the bottom, and the whole system is completely perfect. And, and they, you know, they have a lot of pride with that. And so as offensive as it is to us, what's going on there, to them, I would think it's probably a million times more because they don't, they don't take one thing out of the ground without planning something first. And they're just so much more conscious about that. So one of the most precious ecosystems in the world is just being so violated that it's, it's just egregious, so. Really questioning the legislators themselves and their personal family interest and the love for their kids and would they want to feed their family food that was um, poisoned and I know that that's why they passed it so I'm wondering the mayor and Kwai and all of those people who are bought out they have families that they love too they don't understand that they are causing their own family's damage 
It's a really good question and a hard one to answer because I'm not them, but you know, they do live on the island. I know the governor's mansion's a long way away from these fields, and I know that some of the legislator, you know, some of the legislator, they don't live on Kauai. They live on Oahu, so they're far away and on another side of the island. But, you know, if you think about Hawaii and just for example, the VOG, right? If you live there, we, we get VOG. It's like smog from a volcano. And it, and it causes irritation in people's lungs and their eyes and so forth, respiratory issues. But if you think of that drifting all the way from the Big Island to Kauai, it's a long journey, um, then why wouldn't a pesticide be able to go around the corner from the west side to the north shore when the wind turns and we have Kona winds? Of course, everything's gonna blow all the way around. So I, I don't think there's anywhere to run or hide, and it's part of my motivation to, to tell this story, is that I, I feel like we're all at risk, and that we all have to do better, and certainly the people who are in charge um, in the state have to do something about the lack of regulation and oversight. It's time. Time's up. And I was wondering, then, my question is, is there any ongoing retrospective study of the actual children in these little townships surrounding these fields that is being started or ongoing or any thoughts on that? Well, we've seen many epidemiological studies that show cancers in children, respiratory illness, uh, developmental delays, and those have happened in other communities, like the cohort study done by uh, Brenda Eskenazi or Dr. Bradley Peterson, who's in the film. So we don't want to wait 20 years to replicate those findings. We should be able to apply that science now. It's my understanding that there was a big lag in the um, birth defect registry in the state and that they're now just catching up. But do keep in mind that if somebody really gets sick there, we don't necessarily have the means to treat them on the island of Kauai. If your child has a rare form of neuroblastoma, you're going to have to go to Children's Hospital in Los Angeles, or you're going to have to go to St. Jude's. You can't get treated on the island, so I'm not even sure if they are keeping accurate records. And I, um, and I was told that the birth defect registry had not been updated for many, many years, and now they're backpedaling to do that. So we, we will be looking into that before we finalize this film. Is there food being produced on these experimental fields, and what's happening to that? That's an interesting question because we're hearing that there's going to be an expansion of the genetically engineered test crops when they move their facilities from Molokai, but one of the companies has stated that they want to grow food or organic food or some food parallel, and I'm curious how that could even be possible without um, some regeneration of the soil. I don't know how you could have come from applying 18 tons of restricted use pesticides on our island and then suddenly be growing organic food right in those same fields. So that is a really good question and I'm, I'm not sure how to answer it right now because... I know, this, that, I know that the fields, like they've spread so much poison that they've had to even scrap the fields. They're moving the fields because they can't even, their, their results aren't even pure anymore. There's so much poison that they have to systematically move around. And, as far as I know, I don't think they are producing that much food. I thought they were just testing. Well, none of this food is for human consumption. Yeah, They're doing research testing. and development of It's just dead seed patches corn. everywhere. You know? So once they figure out what's herbicide resistant, right, and, and, and they get the strain that they want, they send all those seeds to somewhere like Iowa to grow them in fields there. And Hawaii really doesn't even have the kind of soil and climate where corn would be indigenous, right? It's not really... It's not native to our island. Um, but the food, in terms of food, no, those are not for, for human consumption. Sorry? I don't know. They're very secretive. We don't know. They don't disclose. That's part of what Bill 2491 was and the subsequent 25 bills you saw just last year that all failed. We wanted disclosure. We wanted to know what they're doing, what they're spraying, when and where. And thus far, they've eluded us. After watching a movie like this, how many of you guys are going to start buying organic? Because that is what takes away from these companies. It's important. You know, we talk about this as an issue, and that's like the one thing that you can do in your life to make a difference. You don't have to go away from here and feel like shitty about politics and trying to get money out of politics, and it's just you trying to do that.
It's one tiny step. And I just think we haven't talked about that, and it's a really big thing you can do in your life. Thank you. That is such a wise piece of advice. We all vote with our dollar every single day. Absolutely. Every single day we lift our fork. Every single day we go to the grocery store, we vote for what we believe in and what we think is important. So we have to support local farmers. We have to support organic. We have to put our money where our mouth is. And we have to really understand that if the food doesn't say organic, then it's most likely containing genetically modified organisms. Um, I'm a native Hawaiian, and I live here in Sedona, and I'm an organic gardener. And I want to encourage people to buy organic products like Sarah, who owns Chocolita, said. And also, I want to encourage everyone here to become involved in an organic garden, too. And I want to thank you so much on behalf of Hawaiians for this film. And I support you and your mission. Thank you very much. Really quick, I just want to thank Keely because she's a force of nature, and so is Pierce and Terry. And without the three of their efforts, they're working day and night for, I would say, three years at least. And uh, we owe them a lot because they're just bringing this out. They're doing the festival circuit wherever they can do, and they're spreading awareness. So please get on social, follow them, and let's just thank them. Thank you, Keely. Thank you. We yeah. have a a website that you can follow, and, uh, and that way you can spread the word or tell people in other cities, New York City is our next stop, and we go to Geneva and I think several other festivals following. Uh, we usually post a couple weeks in advance. Social media, we have an Instagram site, and uh, we hope to be expanding that soon so that we can put people in touch with each other's comments. The biggest thing for me is that I not only am getting reception from audiences like yourself, but the Native Hawaiians themselves who have you know, given their blessing to this film, the kahuna, saying that spirit isn't political, but we have, to, we have to gravitate toward the light, and the light is really important. And all of you, each and every one of you coming tonight, you are the light, and you will illuminate the darkness. So thank you for sharing the message. Thank you for your interest in our film. Thank you so much. And we've got a couple special presentations, actually. Uh, we get praise every year that our documentary lineup is the best on the planet at any film festival. I'll put it up against Sundance, I'll put it up against anybody. And Connie Levinson is the head of the documentary program. She and her team discovered this wonderful film. So I'd like to invite and appre show appreciation to Connie Levinson, our documentary programmer. And Max, you get to stand in for Pierce right now, so no pressure. You look good, you look good. So we would like to present to you, this is uh, the 2018 Global Initiative Humanitarian Award presented to Keely Shea Brosnan and Pierce Brosnan in recognition of your dedication to influencing the world through your passion and environmental efforts in honor of your unwavering commitment to foster better care for our planet on a global scale and in appreciation of your devotion to humanitarian work and your determination to make this world a better place. Congratulations, and thank you.